BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of This Dope Cooking Show. I am your host, Chef Jeff. If you don't know that, then you've been missing out, like, for all these weeks that I've been making shows. You've been missing out on some good food, some good conversations, some just having fun with me in my kitchen, cooking some food to help you be the next hit at your party, your next cookout, your next potluck, whatever. All right? So, welcome, welcome, welcome. Stop right now. Tag all your friends. Tell all your friends that this dope cooking show is on right now. Because I'm about to hook y'all up with a dish from St. Louis that if you ain't never had it, it's going to blow your mind. One, two, it's going to make you the hit of the party. Three, they're going to be like, where you learn this from? And you can tell them, Chef Jeff, this dope cooking show. Call your friends, tag them. Tune in, tell them, hey, look, the show is on right now. Stop what you're doing so we can watch the show. All right? Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. I'm telling you, you got to tell them. Okay, look. All right. If you don't know, now you know. I am from St. Louis, Missouri. Chef Jeff is from St. Louis, Missouri. I know y'all, I know y'all think I'm a Texan and everything, but I'm not. I'm still from the Lou. I still have a 314 number, and I'm not letting it go ever. So, St. Louis to the death of me, 314, St. Louis stand up. Nelly, Chingy, all them, everybody stand up. You know what I'm saying? Because St. Louis, we, we, we big time. We, we, I mean, what are we talking about, right? So, look, um, I started working at Harris Casino years ago, right? And um, I was introduced to this dish by a friend of mine. No, she wasn't no friend. She wasn't no friend. She was my she was my girlfriend, right? But my mama makes it too. Everybody make it, right? Everybody make it. It's called Master Choli. Master Choli. M O S. Master Choli. But you might hear people say Master Choli. A Master Choli. It's still the same thing, right? Um, of course, I've had it, but it ain't nothing like when you do it yourself, right? So, of course, over the years, I've tried to do it my way, but it just don't really. It's one of those things where you just don't need nothing else, too. Like, you don't need to try to add enough pizzazz. Just do your thing. Put it all together, put it in the oven, bake it off, and boom, it's going to be fire yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about killer, right? So, um, yeah. Um, the girl I was dating at the time made this mascarpone dish, and it was so cheesy. It was so good. Like, still to this day, I cannot pinpoint... Um, what she did to it and like i can't call her and ask her right because like life's have done this right but i mean i still remember that flavor right can't reproduce it for whatever but i can get close um i've had it from other people and it's not like that one so that was when i found out that uh <laughs> i was lactose intolerant lactose intolerant um Woke up the next day, like, my stomach was tripping, but I had ate all that cheese. Like, I had ate a lot of it, right? So, um, today's dish is called Mastacholi. It is an Italian dish. It's a real thing, but it is super popular in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, at the cookouts, at the barbecues, at the fish fries. Okay, stop. Spaghetti is a side dish. Where we come from? It's not a meal. It can be, but it is not a meal. It is a side. So when in St. Louis, they have fish fries. It is fish and spaghetti. It is not spaghetti. Now, they do do spaghetti dinners. The Catholic people do those sometimes, but it is fish and spaghetti. Anywhere you go, you can get 
catfish nuggets, catfish fillets, catfish steaks, buffalo, jack salmon, anything, any one of them fish, any any fish, fried fish, you can get that. But it's going to come with your choice of potato salad or spaghetti. Just want to let you know, spaghetti is a side dish. A lot of people be like, nah, it's a meal. Yeah, it's a meal if you put garlic bread and salad with it, it becomes a meal. But if you put it with fish, that is a side. Just want to say it out loud. Don't judge me. Judge your mama. I don't care. Stand on. This is how I, I'm, I'm standing on. Okay. So this particular dish, masticoli, it is a real Italian dish. Um, like I said, it's super popular in St. Louis, Missouri. I made it one time and took it to a cookout. Uh, we had a potluck type deal, like kickback, when I was living in Nashville. And the lady couldn't even say it. She was like, Mastacho. <laughs> so I knew, like, people didn't know what it was. And, and that's cool, right? Different areas, you know, have different things. Like, our fried rice is not like fried rice anywhere else. It's just not. Um, egg foo young is also a St. Paul sandwich. This is not anywhere else. You can't get that nowhere else, right? Only in St. Louis. So this is one of those only in St. Louis things, unless you know somebody from St. Louis that's gonna, that can do it. I'm the guy that's going to show you how to do it, right? So let's get busy. So in this in this dish, it is penne noodles, spaghetti sauce, your choice of meat. Now you can do ground beef, ground turkey, ground sausage, ground sweet Italian sausage. You can do chicken. I ain't never seen none of these done other than well, chicken. I ain't never seen it, right? But to each is their own. Um, and then you have it's is you know spaghetti sauce and it's made like spaghetti, but then you add cheese inside and on top. Yes. Do it how you want, but you gotta put the cheese on inside and on top. I'm just saying. All right. Then we're gonna pair that with some garlic bread, right? Um, and then that's that's gonna be the meal, because that's a meal when you put it with garlic bread. I said it me um so yeah let's get busy we're gonna put some peppers and onions in the meat i'm gonna get our meat cooked off we got our water boiling for our noodles already because i wanted to go ahead and get that started so we're gonna get this party rolling and yeah we're gonna get started so i'm gonna go get ready and we're gonna get the cooking call your friends tell them we on this dope cooking show let's go All right, guys, we back. We're going to get this party started. And so, uh, right now I'm sharpening up my knife. You see, sharp, sharp, sharp. Yeah, that's... Anyway. Getting my knife ready to go. Um, Yeah. So, what's up, guys? What y'all been up to? You know? Did y'all enjoy the This Dope Cooking Show Marathon last week? It was dope, wasn't it? You know, go back and you can watch every episode of this dope cooking show on the BS3 network, BS3 channel. I'm on Roku. If you have Roku TV, you can watch every single episode I've made from the beginning to right now. So get in there, check them out. So here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to do a little bit of peppers, green pepper, and a little bit of onion um, for flavor, right? And just because we just are who we are and that's what we want to do. So. Just a little bit of onion, not too much. Um, everybody ain't a fan of onions, you know what I'm saying? I love them uh, personally. You know, they're good for heart health, all of that. So I use them. I like I like good onion mixture. Little onion and peppers. Throw a little bit of garlic in there. So we got onions, peppers, garlic that'll be going in our skillet with our ground. We're gonna use ground turkey and ground beef. Uh, why? <laughs> Just because we can. I want to. Um, just I like a little variety. It's mine. I'm just where I'm gonna eat it. Um, normally would I do that? Probably not. I would probably just um uh, keep it simple with the um ground beef, and that's just cause it's a meat thing, you know. So, um, like I said, keep it simple with these right here. Uh huh. And then we'll do a little bit of. Garlic when we start to go in the pan with our and the guys, it's gonna be real quick. It don't take a whole lot to put this together. If you can put a pot of spaghetti together, you can put this together. 
because that's what it is. So, you know, it's just a different noodle if you want to kind of keep it simple. So, yeah, we got our noodles going. Our noodles, we're going to put them in right now because the water is boiling. I'm going to put them in there. Yeah, why not? Pinay noodles. One pound box. Yep. Kroge. Um, I like I said, I go to Kroger. I go to Walmart Market. I just happened to be in Kroger when I thought about this. So I was like, yeah, to grab them. So we're gonna use our we're gonna use ground turkey. This is 90 90 10. And then we just got some ground beef, which is 85. 15. You don't have to use these. Um, you can use whichever one you want, right? It's totally up to you. Show, show, show thing. I just choose to use them because I think they won't sell. And, um, you know, it's cool. You don't have to worry about it. I'm going to go, uh-oh, a little boil over. I'm going to always grab what's on sale. That's just me. Um, is that good? Not all the time. No, it's not. It's not good all the time. Um, but for the sake and purposes of this opportunity, yeah, that was perfect. Yeah, that was fine. So, it's all good. We're going to... So, let me tell y'all something. So, I got gloves on. Because I want y'all to see my hand. So, I was on the holy box, right? Cooking down. Um, we had a, a thing for the eclipse. I hope y'all enjoyed that. Because um, it was pretty cool to see. It was cool to see, like, the street lights come on. <laughs> and then go right back off. That was cool. Uh, and, like, really be in darkness for, like, four minutes. So, anyway... Uh, so I'm cooking down on the honey box, right? And I dropped some fish. The fish flipped when I laid it in the grease, it flipped back and threw some grease hot oil on my hand. Ooh, I watched the whole thing happen like in slow motion and everything. Like, it just I went nothing I can do. Went nothing I can do. Uh, <laughs> and it hurt so bad. Oh, it hurt so bad, but yeah, yeah. So we, I enjoyed that. I had a good time doing the solar eclipse party. It, we did like a way back throwback party. It was pretty good. I enjoyed myself. It was pretty cool. So we got our peppers and onions cut. We're going to get our garlic out and we're going to get our meats in the skillet. We got skillet heating up. Got our penne noodles um, in the water. We're going to come back and we're going to get started putting it together. All right. Like I said, we got our noodles boiling. They got them in that rolling bowl. Put, don't forget to put some a little tablespoon of oil and a little bit of salt in there for flavor um we're gonna go in go ahead and go on in with our peppers and onions yes indeed a little bit of garlic it's up to you how much you want all right we'll let them play for a little bit Oh, that aroma is everything. Ooh like I said, I'm doing ground beef and turkey. So let's get these moving around. The pan. So you're going to want to let that get fragrant. You don't have to cook it all the way. It will finish in the um, while it's cooking. Everything is going to finish together, but you want it to get fragrant, right? That's our new word, y'all. Fragrant. Uh oh, our seasons jump out, jumping out at us. They want to be used so bad. Yes. Uh. All right. So cool. Let's get our meats in there because we are ready to roll. Skillet is hot, so I'm going to use half of this. I'm going to use half of it. Because I'm going to use half of this ground beef. Now, it's up to you. I like my stuff meaty. I, I like it meaty, guys. So, we'll get that in there. Get our fancy thing. What? Okay. Yeah. Fancy, fancy smasher upper.
Also, you want to pay attention to your meat to pepper rate, meat to vegetable ratio. You don't want to be too overpowering with vegetables. Um, you want to make sure that you keep them, you know, keep it kind of even as far as like how much vegetables to how much ground beef. So I use half a total. I've used a pound of meat, and I don't know how much. Uh, probably about maybe a half a pound of vegetables. In here, you want to kind of keep it, keep it even. Totally up to you how you do that. Our seasonings for the day, so we're gonna use this um, herb garden seasoning. Use that in there because that's gonna bring it up. And. Of course, we'll use our pepper, salt, onion powder, garlic powder mixture. Put a little bit of that in there. And boom, we got it. So we're going to let this continue to cook. We got our noodles rolling. And so when we put this together, of course, it's going to look like spaghetti with a different noodle, right? That's the whole thing. And then when you add that cheese and you put it in the oven and let it cook, oh, buddy, buddy, buddy. That's when the party start right there. So we got our oven heated up to three, 350, right? Um, you don't have to go no hotter than that, I don't think. That's just me, though, because um, you don't want to cook it too fast. So we got our oven heating, heating to 350. I have a convection oven, so it's going to be a little different, but it's cool. I know, right? I got a convection oven in the house. And most apparently most newer homes come with that option on the stove. I think it is everything because you know we're looking at something to cook, bake something, and they be like convection or or conventional. I'm like what is that? Well, I got both of them here. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. So we let, the typical cook time on these noodles is about twelve minutes um, on penne noodles. I'm going to go about 12 minutes after the water starts boiling. That is very key, very important. After the water starts to boil, you're going to let them cook for 12 minutes once you get them in, in there. And we're moving right along, guys. We've got everything cooking and working. You know, so put this thing together. But make sure you taste this uh, ground meat because this is going to be part of where the heart of your flavor is going to come from. So make sure it's where you want it to be, how you want it to be, right? Um, for me, I use a uh, ragu sauce because it is sweeter than Prego. Um, I could have made my own sauce and I didn't want to, right? Because er ain't nobody, everybody not making their own sauce to make uh, masa chota. They not. So um, this could be a quick little, okay, we got 45 minutes, you can knock this out, right? Um, and everybody's got, di you got dinner. Um, this could be something that you prep on the way to uh, soccer practice, come home, finish it, and then it's done. Everybody can eat at a decent time. So this is a quick meal, right? Quickly get it together and get it get it going. And you ain't got to put too much into it, right? So that's how we working. I'm trying to do something where you don't have to put too much into it. But it's still delicious, still good, and it's still a hit, right? So that's how we doing that thing. That's how we doing it. So I'm working hard on keeping it simple because... I have a tendency to make too much. So I'm, I'm trying to keep it, keep it regular, keep it simple, keep it small. Because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to be fine for the summer. So I ain't trying to, you know, gain too much weight or nothing. But don't worry. It's going to get eight. I know that for sure. And if not, I got some friends at work that I love to have this just because they seen it made on just a cooking show. <laughs> Okay, guys, that's what we got going so far. We come back, we're going to put it together, mix it up with our sauce, and then we're going to get it in the pan so we can get it in the oven. All right? So here's a good look. You got a good look at our ground meat mixture, and our noodles are still cooking till the al dente. Um, and then once we get to that, it's a wrap. You know, eat that thing in the oven for about... You want to get it in the oven long enough for it to uh, cook. I mean, for the cheese to melt good. Get all up in there and get that cheese melted on the top because it's going to be predominantly done once you assemble it and put it together, right? Yeah, I know. So you want to put the cheese in there 
get the cheese melted up. And so I'm gonna we're gonna cut this Velveeta cheese in little chunks. And that's how we're gonna we're gonna put that in. I'm using Velveeta. Because why? Uh, it's my show. And that's what I want to use. And it's gonna be good. And I ain't gotta worry about the cheese because Velveeta, we know how that go. Right? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, y'all yeah, see it. All mixed in, mixed together. That's spaghetti with different noodles, right? Yep. Until we add that old cheese, and that's what we about to do. Okay, we back with your homeboy from St. Louis who's a chef that's going to help y'all to the game on Master Choli. All right, so we got everything already done, right? We got a pre assemble. Um, so we're about to finish the final assembly of this dish, right? And like I told you, bake it off. You can now you can serve it in the pot if you want to, just like it is. But I, I'm gonna put it in, the, in this pot, right? This glass dish right here, and we're gonna add some cheese to it. So there you go, got a little bit there, right. Now we're gonna add some of this cheese to it. Now, this is up to you how much cheese you wanna add, where you wanna add the cheese, and all that, right? It's totally up to you. I, me, I'm gonna add cheese all the way through and on top. So I cut my cheese up into smaller cubes and we're just gonna strategically place it off in there. Yep, we're just gonna place these little cheese cubes in here. Velveeta is what I use, <laughs> you know? You can use whatever you want to, however you wanna do it. But the last time I had it, sis put Velveeta in it. So, that's what we finna eat. That's what we finna do. We finna make it just like this. Put some Velveeta in there. Mm -hmm. And you put as much or as little as you like. Now, for me, I like a lot. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. It's totally fine. Yep. So, we got that in there. We got a little bit of the mixture left. So, we're going to add that on top. We're going to cover it with foil. We're going to put it in the oven for probably about 30 minutes. Maybe not even that long. Just long enough for the cheese to melt all the way through. Right? That's how we're going to do that thing. Um, we're going to put some more cheese on top. Because why? Because it's this dope cooking show. It's dope to do that. It's dope to put some cheese on the top. So we got that mixture. Got the penne noodles, we got the ground turkey, ground beef, with our ragu spaghetti sauce. Yep, and we got our garlic bread in the oven. It's getting hot in here like Nelly said. So I gotta go turn the air on, cause it's hot in my kitchen. I don't know why, this oven is just so doing its thing. So, we got some cheese there. I think I got some Parmesan I wanna add on there too. I might be doing too much. Then again, it wouldn't be me if I was. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. I think that's enough cheese, y'all. It's gonna be enough. That's enough cheese. We gonna that's enough. All right, just enough cheese. Okay. I'm lying. I'm gonna find a parmesan. Put some parmesan there. So I'm gonna stir it up like this, so we can get all of it incorporated, all in there together. Yep. We get our foil out. So look, I'm gonna put some parmesan cheese on it. I ain't gonna even lie. I'm gonna put parmesan cheese on it. But I'm going to wait until it come out. I'm going to wait till it comes out of the oven. And we're going to top it with Parmesan cheese when we finish it off. So, boom, we got our mozzarella dish ready to go into the oven to bake to melt that cheese. And then we come back. We're going to plate it up. And we're going to enjoy you guys. This dope cooking show. We working. All right, guys. So, our food is finished cooking. But I, I just wanted to touch on a, on a subject that's been bothering me for a minute. Have y'all noticed the decline of customer service in restaurants lately? Like, it's not my fault that I chose your establishment to get food. Like, I heard y'all had some good food. I was recommended here by a friend. I heard y'all had some good drinks. So it's why is it my fault that I chose to come to your establishment to feed myself? It's crazy, right? Um, I noticed that, like, some of the, um, even, even the fast food places, when you go in there, the food is not all the way done like it's supposed to be, or you know, people got an attitude, or what is it, right? 
I just think that good customer service is something that is um, taught. Um, you just just because you of age and you can work at a place and you have a pretty smile does not stop there. Customer service does not stop there. Like you have to be able to interact. You have to be able to talk to people. You have to be able to communicate back and forth. And it's it's starting to decline. Like I went to Popeyes, right? And I was like, hey, I need a hundred pieces of chicken. And she was like, huh? Hold on. And it was like, she didn't understand what I was saying. So I chalked it up to her English, right? Because she was a Hispanic young lady. And she could say what she wanted. She could say all of the things, the normal stuff on the menu. Um, like I wanted the number two. She got that just fine. But when I said I wanted 100 pieces of chicken to pick up tomorrow morning at 11, it was like her brain stopped functioning, right? And so she had to go get like two other people to figure it out, to get it done, which is fine. You know, if you don't, haven't been taught how to ring that up or you never experienced something like that, always get help. Sure, of course. But like, what what was up? Like, you like you couldn't you couldn't make it happen? Like, what's, what's going on? So I just, for me, like, customer service is the end goal, right? You want to provide good customer service so that way they'll come back. Like, I went, okay, so we was living in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, right? And every Friday, check permitting, we would go to a place called El Camino. El Camino's was the best Mexican food in that part of town, hands down, right? We had a server named Gabriel. Every Friday we would walk in there, we would ask for Gabriel, and Gabriel knew that it was us. He knew what we wanted, what we were drinking. We didn't really even have to talk to him, right? But he would come over to the table and he would shoot the, just, you know, shoot the stuff with us. We would talk back and forth. Like, How was your day? How was your week? What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. Nice guy. And we, you know, he made us feel like we should have come there to eat the food. Like, we, he made us feel like we should have been there to eat. And it was just an overwhelmingly good customer service experience every time. Not sometime. Every time, right? Even to the point where we went in there one time and he wasn't there. And we almost left. Like, it was like, oh, he not here? No, nah, we not finna. Because, like, at that time, it was like, okay, Friday night, we just got paid. Tomorrow, we're going to be broke again. So it was like one of those in the middle of the struggle type thing. And it had to be worthwhile, right? We didn't want to be like, should have just saved our money and stayed at home, right? So we had to make good with what we had, and we had to make good with the experience that we wanted. So El Camino, Murfreesboro, Gabriel set it off for him, right? So now I go into places and I look for that same type of customer service experience because, like, I'm hungry. I want something to drink. You work here. Let's let's do the thing, right? So, like, I kind of like, so, like, I sit down. I can't, I start a timer, see how long it takes to, you know, server to come in. At least greet me to, you know, come and, you know, let me know. This is, I'm the server for this section. I'll be helping you guys tonight. I start a timer. And I really don't like to complain, but sometimes you just have to, right? Sometimes you really just have to say something. Like if I sit in a restaurant 10 minutes and nobody said anything to me, nobody's bought me a water, said, hey, Sally will be over here in about five, give her a little minute, she's overwhelmed, whatever. I'm getting up and I'm walking out. Um, why? Because, like, I'm just as important as everybody in the restaurant, so don't leave me out. I'm, you know, I might tip more than the last table. Never know. But you have to come and see, right? I, I At least give me the courtesy of saying, hey, I'll be right back. I, I'm swamped over here. I got a table of 25. And they just said you. I told them not to. Like, there are certain circumstances that will prevent you from being on, being prompt when you're seated at a table, right? being a ser server from being prompt to your table when you're seated. Um, those are just the things that you don't know. I know them because I've been in the restaurant business for 18 years now, right? Front of the house, back of the house, outside the house, under the house. Like I know it back and forth, right? So there are certain things that keep the server from jumping all right on when you get sat down. And that those things are kind of understandable, but don't leave me in the wild just guessing. Because now I think so many things, right? I think because I'm black. I think because I'm big. I think because my kids loud. Like I start thinking all kind of stuff, right? So it's, the, it's just one of those things where part of customer service is like you got to make sure that the customers feel 
welcome in your establishment. And then, like, always, for whatever, I always pay attention to if they go the extra mile, right? Most of the times they'll be like, all right. Or they'll be like, I'll be right back. If I have to, like, flag you down, like, hey, I want another drink. Like, I'm out of Coke over here and my kid needs Sprite. And you got about 45 seconds before my kid is going to set this off and we're going to have a problem, right? You're going to be looking at me because you think I'm the bad daddy, but all he really wants is some Sprite. I'm just saying. I'm just trying to keep you in a hundred. Like, we, like, it's a give and take type thing, right? And so I just think that, you know, of the places that I've been, the decline is on the rent on the on the rise because it's like people don't care anymore. So I just wanted to take this little moment to say that if you are in the customer service field, people are watching. Um, if you're in serving service, or if you're a servant, server, serving somebody, people watch. And it's always good to do it with a, a smile, a happy heart. Days things are hard. You know what I mean? People have stuff going on at home. Um, I remember I was trying to get a table at a place and the lady was like, just call me back next Wednesday. Now, mind you, everything was locked up tight for Valentine's Day. I just wanted to try this restaurant somebody told me to try. And they, like, open table had them sold up. So I called a restaurant myself and was like, hey, I'm trying to get a table. Somebody recommended me this place. I want to try it on Valentine's Day. And she was like, ooh, um, hmm, let me see what I could do. Uh, I'm going to work with you, but just let me see something. So she was like, call me back next Wednesday. I, I don't know exactly, but I'll get you in here. But call me back next Wednesday. You better believe Wednesday at 11 o'clock, I called her Maggie. Her name was Maggie. You better believe Wednesday at 11 o'clock, I called her. and was like, hi, it's uh, Jeff. You know, you told me to call you. And she, she was like, ah, you know what? Thank you, because my life has been in shambles. And. Everything seems to have fallen apart, but I knew that you were going to call me and make my day. So it worked out for both of us. I was able to call her back, bring joy to her life, and she was able to seat me in a booked restaurant. I will never forget that experience, right? And so that's what I think that, like, it, every single one doesn't have to be that, that grand, but at least make it an opportunity where at least they won't forget you, right? I will never forget Gabriel. I'll never forget him. Now, I like we would even go, we even went back to the restaurant and he wasn't there. He had moved back to Mexico for a while. And we was like, well, where he at? And so we ended up getting a dude named Hayamis, which is Jeremy in English. Well, he was good too, but he wasn't great like Gabriel was, right? Gabriel, I ain't had to tell him I need another. We would just roll up with him. A lot of times that was kind of problematic because we had to get back home, but fine. He would stay down the street. It was cool. But it still, still, all still, if you're in the serving field, if you serve, serve with a smile, a glad heart, and make a memorable opportunity for the people that you're serving. I just try to, even with this, I try to make sure that um, this is something that you can, you can get something from me. I play around all the time. I play all day. I wake up to play. I wake up to be petty. I wake up to play. And that's cool. I enjoy that. I'm happy with my life the way it is. And I just think that somebody can hear my voice, see what I'm doing, uh, watch my show, and get a, and take that and make that a, a memorable experience for somebody else. And I'm able to help do that, which is cool. I also, where I cook at the school, I'm always looking for opportunity to, to give the kids something that they never had, right? Of course, everybody's not going to like what you do. Everybody's not going to really kind of go oh they may have they may be culture they may be like oh yeah i've had a steak before like that's cool like all right i've had a spinach wrap before with chicken salad in it no big deal buddy but somebody has it and so that person that hasn't had it has the opportunity to have it and so now their taste buds have been enlightened their view process on oh it's green but it's still good right so I just wanted to take that, this moment to like, hey, if you are serving, if you are a servant, if you are in customer service, make people feel good. It's a lot of stuff out here that make us feel bad. The last thing you want to do is go pay our money to be made to feel bad, right? So we're going to plate this food up and we're going to eat. Boom. All right, guys, here's our finished product. 
Master Choli. Master Choli. Say, look, you can tell your friends that you got a homeboy from St. Louis that just taught you how to make Master Choli, just like they did in Alu. So here it is, guys. Of course, I finished mine with some shredded cheese and some Parmesan cheese. Doing too much, I know. But that's how it be sometimes. And yes, this is it, guys. We're going to play this up some. This Dub Cooking Show. Here it is, guys. Catch y'all next time. All right, guys. Let's get into this plate. Let's get into this plate. Yes. Your homeboy from St. Louis taught you on this dope cooking show how to make master choli. Got our garlic bread with it. Ooh, we got our top with some Parmesan cheese. It's about to go down. <laughs> Ooh, where my mama at? Because I want to give her some. Hey, look, thank y'all for tuning in with this dope cooking show. Love y'all. I'm about to eat. I will catch y'all next week. Don't forget, tune in, tell a friend, tag a friend. Share the live, share the video, all of that. Cause look, DS3 Network, man, they doing their thing. And I want y'all to be along for this ride. So look, we about to eat. I'll let y'all next week. Peace.